is Morphine's AMD Ryzen-based S500 Plus Moto more than just fine? And can such a small computer bring out big performance? There's only one way to find out. Let's inspect. Everybody, welcome, nice to meet you, I'm Michael, and my mission here is to help you to get to know fresh and new devices and understand about their real life performance. Because ads and specifications are a wild thing, but when you happen to use devices on a regular basis in your daily tasks, well, that could come and show up a very different picture. Today we're going to be covering this brand new mini PC by the company More Fine. Uh, it's a device called the S. 500 plus and there are a few different variations of this model uh, hosting different combinations of processor amount of ram and storage availability and uh, today we're focusing in particular uh, on the model which is hosting an r9 amd cpu inside the zen 3 technology with quite a lot of ram 32 gigs one terabyte storage pretty promising specifications but uh, as we mentioned to us it's really important to find out how it actually performs. A couple of months ago I've been reviewing the Morphine M6, it's another mini PC even more compact than this body, and a lot of you have really enjoyed its uh, small form factor and decent performance at a very attractive price. This here definitely belongs to the high-end segment being obviously more expensive but also hosting features which definitely can challenge some of the market leaders, like if we think of the Dell Optiplex or HP Z2 Generation 9 Mini PC and similar, which might cost kind of twice the price of the S500+. Plus. So, is it any good? Let's dive into it. Since this is one of the premium Morphine PCs, unsurprisingly it arrives in a very nice looking pack. Protection layer of foam keeping the PC safe during transportation looks very good at the first sight. Here's the charger, unfortunately an external one. While not very practical, it's a win-win for the designers because they gain some space advantage and also reduce the amount of generated heat inside. Some more accessories included, like a VESA mount adapter and a SATA extension cable, so we're gonna take a look at the expandability and the repairability options a little later. First of all, let us focus on the assembly. Metal construction, which not only looks great, but also feels good to the touch. Type-C port with two USB 3.2 ports on the front, alongside the LED and a power button. Most connectivity features are on the back. This includes four extra USB 2.0 ports, display port, HDMI out, gigabit LAN port, and another LAN port operating at 2.5 gigs and a 3.5mm audio jack, which sadly most smartphone makers have already abandoned these days. Internally, the equipment is very impressive. The AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX with integrated AMD Vega 8 graphics, with 32GB DDR4 memory, expandable up to 64, this 1TB NVMe, high thermal conductivity, pure copper heatsink for cooling, AX wireless support, Bluetooth 5.2, possibility for pre-installed operating system and weight of around 1 kilo fits within this tiny size. Specifications are obviously really awesome and uh, it has some features that even a lot more expensive desktop PCs are not capable of offering. Well, it does have certain drawbacks, which we are going to highlight by the end of this episode. Now, I want to highlight a few things. First, starting with CPU, uh, hosting the AMD R9 5900, the HX edition, this is not a desktop CPU. You know, it's something that is mostly used in laptops, so I, I think the reason more fine go for it is pretty obvious, because they want to gain good performance, but don't want to spend too much of energy and don't want to have something which generates too much of heat. So they really nail it with the choice of CPU. It's uh, based on AMD's Zen Generation 3 technology, so performance is exceptional. It can even challenge some of this year's uh, mobile CPUs by Intel, the 12600 series, for instance. Concerning the RAM, it supports up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the one that I have in my hands, it's with 32 gigs of RAM, but you can actually reach to these dim bags and you can replace them if there's the need to. 
The GPU inside is the integrated in the CPU, it's the AMD Vega 8. Nothing too spectacular, it obviously would be the biggest bottleneck in terms of performance. For heavyweight gaming, forget, but uh, if you run these games with uh, medium graphics, or if you prefer to do some basic photo editing, even video editing, if you mostly focus on 1080p, that's gonna be enough for heavyweight gaming or 4K video editing, you better think of purchasing an external graphics adapter. So, after knowing about the specifications and the fact that the hardware, while not being absolutely latest for 2022, is close to be top-notch, especially fitting within the scale, let's take a look at the internals and think about expandability and repairability. There is quite large auto-controlled cooling fan. If you wonder whether it can be noisy, Yeah, if there's a lot of stress with the system, totally. If you're browsing or editing documents, it's very, very quiet. Put the PC behind the monitor and you're likely going to not notice its existence anymore. The top and the bottom sides can be individually removed. The top side has access to the storage and lets you use the space for an additional 2.5-inch drive. At the bottom is yet another option to fit an M2 storage device. With some more patience, the DIMMs can also be accessed. Luckily, they're not soldered as it is with some other laptops, so they are replaceable. In short, if the CPU or the system board fails, this will be the worst-case scenario. RAM and storage are easily replaceable and fixable, so the S500 Plus is good enough in that regard. I just want to highlight the excellent choice for material of the housing, not only great about heat disposal, but also doesn't easily scratch. Well done, Morphine! Now we focus on the software, the features and the real-life use cases and the performance. Sure, if artificial benchmarks are your thing, you're gonna notice the expected values for the processor and the RAM in this class, and you will notice that it is on par with a lot of way more expensive devices. In my opinion, given the slower trends for developing in the past few years for the x86 architecture, such specs are gonna last for at least a few years if you're not looking for any creative or high graphics demanding work. The PC arrives with Windows 10 Professional, out of the box registered. The license is included in the price, something not to be ignored. I won't go into details about the capabilities of Windows, this is not the point of this review, instead informing you that other operating systems like Ubuntu and the newer Windows 11 are well supported too. Very smooth, very well responding, no bloatware, it's good to feel Windows 10 in its pure form. It's a rather fresh distribution since I only had to install just a few updates and now it shows everything up to date. Browsing is a pleasure, even the heaviest websites out there wouldn't slow the system down. If you have a home NAS server, that's probably the best way to add a lot more storage. I've tested the throughput via the wireless network and the speeds that you're going to see on the screen are even beating a lot of cable-based environments. The speed of close to 80 megabytes per second wirelessly is close to the usual 100 megabytes per second which I achieve using the Gigabit LAN at home. So much about gaming. You can run most of the games at medium graphics or low graphics mode of those that are intensive. Or if you play mostly racing games like I do, then sometimes even the maximum graphics mode is gonna be buttery smooth. For most of the things that you do with the PC, the only bottleneck could be the GPU. But there's the good news that you can go into the BIOS and adjust the allocated memory for the graphics card. The value can go up to 4 gigabytes, something rarely to be seen with integrated graphics. So, perfect for PowerPoint presentations, however, know that you have to purchase Microsoft Office by yourself. For document work, PDFs, photo editing, office work, the S500 Plus excels in each one of these areas and delivers performance which exceeds the expectations from such a small PC. On top of that, peak power is 54 watts. And even under heavy load, it wasn't exceeding that consumption, meaning that it can be a few times more effective than a regular desktop PC about power consumption. Before we do the summary, the drawbacks. No Thunderbolt support. The power supply is external, not that bad, but still not ideal. There are no USB 3 capable parts on the back, you only have two of them but on the front. 
and the fact that at this point of time in 2022 it still doesn't arrive with pre-installed Windows 11, although some people will point to this as a serious advantage. You always have the possibility to upgrade, so the decision is yours. Bottom line, this tiny PC, with exception for the integrated GPU, <laughs> happens to be sometimes faster than my home 4K editing station, which is a bit depressing when I think it through. But also remarkable in showing how far these mini PCs have gone in terms of development. So really kudos to the Morphine team for the awesome builds and the really fantastic hardware that I have placed inside, which can easily surpass a lot of more expensive systems that you can buy. Yes, it does have a few minor flaws, but overall this pack is remarkable. Therefore, if you're looking for something at a small scale, which is not consuming that much of energy and still delivering very steady and solid performance, this is, in my opinion, a no-brainer. And can you think of other models with uh, similar price and better features? Because at this point of time, I can't. Maybe we can carry on the conversation in the comment section below the video. As usual, link to the product somewhere in the video description. Thank you very much for dedicating a few minutes to check this S500 Plus model together with me. And is it more than fine? I totally think so. Have a great day. See you in our next episode. Bye.